Good morning, precious. <laughs> How you doing, baby? Happy Thursday. And today on Coffee and Conversation with your girl, Shaw Kenya. When you get a minute. Go to that YouTube channel, Shikanya. Hit subscribe. Look at some of the videos. If you see something you like, just share it. Don't worry about nobody else. Don't worry about me not being famous yet. Don't worry about me, you not knowing my name or how to pronounce it. For Don't even let that, none of that. But I see some of the stuff you share. It be straight BS. Yep, I see crap. It is nothing positive, nothing that's going to uplift nobody. I, I see what you be posting, so trust and believe. If you share one of my videos from my YouTube channel, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Yeah. You might even get some more followers. Yeah. So, as promised, I want to talk to y'all. Remember, we talked about car ride conversations that you have with your children. And yes, this is Noxzema. I still, you, I'm old school, baby. You got to keep in mind, I'm 50 years old. So my grandma used to put noxema on my face when I had acne when I was growing up. So it works. Somebody complimented me yesterday about my skin. Yeah, because I'm always complimenting people about their skin because I'm an acne sufferer. So when I see people with beautiful skin, I always ask them what's that skin regimen. And I be so serious because I might try it, you know, just to see. But people don't hardly compliment me. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it real with you. The dudes do, but a lot of ladies don't really. Uh, not so much. Don't nobody compliment the pretty girl because they think we already know we pretty. But we need compliments too. So a lady told me yesterday I had pretty skin. I started smiling. <laughs> I started smiling. So yeah, this is my secret. I still use Noxzema. Yeah. So guys, today, just conversation rides that you have with your kids in the car. Yo, hey, April, good morning, sweetie. Where you been, April? I ain't been seeing you. I miss you. Yo, I mean, we got to do lunch one day, April. Yo, so guys, yeah, just some things you talk to your kids about. Because we've been doing this for about four years now. So in those four years, the conversations should have changed a little bit. Your your converse, because I'm age appropriate. I'm an age appropriate person. So I talk to children in certain languages. You know, it might get a little aggressive as they get older, or the words might be a little more mature. I might patty cake it a little bit. I mean, it's just because you gotta reach reach them where they are. And that's even with adults. You gotta reach people, meet people where they are. Hey, David, how you doing, honey? Yeah, you have to reach people where they. are. Uh, yep. So when it comes to kids, as they get older, your conversation should be changing. So just a couple things that you should be in the car talking about. Like, as soon as they get in the car, you should be talking to them about. Are you talking to them about, first of all, children of color, have you had to talk with them? about how they're supposed to respond if they're ever encountered by law enforcement, put their hands on the steering wheel, don't reach for nothing, do as they're told until they get to the stuff. Like, have you had that talk with your baby? You have? Okay. Do you talk to your children about relationships? Do your son or daughter have a boyfriend or girlfriend? You should know these things. Yeah, how old is your baby? How old do you feel they should be before they can't can have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Yeah, because they like 12 years old, 11 years old with a boyfriend and girlfriend. They're 11, 12 years old, and they're sexually active. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, just talking. Are you talking to them about sex? I know it's uncomfortable. You don't really want to. But you need to start to, the earlier the better. Yeah, the earlier the better. Um, and like I say, your conversation should mature. How old do you think your child should be before you talk to them about sex? 16? 16 for what, April? Dating or talking to them about sex? How old should your child be before you start? Well, when they're like five, four and five, you should be talking to them about good touch, bad touch. I will say that. Um, and then you got to keep in mind, I was molested at seven. So a grown man 
touched me inappropriately at the age of seven. So uh, me, I went early with my kids. Yeah, I talked. To, I used to talk to my boys about good touch, bad touch, because boys get molested all the time. So I had to let let them know every time they would come from someone's house, I would let them tell me what happened because I didn't let them stay stay out to too many places. You can't let your kids stay overnight in too many places because you don't know what goes on in other people's homes. You know what I'm saying? So they, they it was only mainly family that they probably stayed the night out. A couple of their friends, but I was the type of mom that used to have their friends at my house. Dating 16, sex 12. Okay, okay, April. But I go a little little younger. Yeah, because like I said, it, it happened to me at age seven. So, yep, I've always talked to my children, especially my girls. Yep. Do you talk to them about not having sex? Yep, I used to preach to my girls about not having sex, abstaining from sex, being a virgin. Yeah, stay in a virgin as long as possible. Yep, I'm all, I'm, I'm very, how can I put it? Um, I, I believe in preserving children's innocence. I believe in that. I believe in sheltering kids from certain things. I believe in that. Um, Cause you don't want them to grow up too fast. You know what I'm saying? You don't want them to grow up too fast. Yep, I used to have my girls believe in that. They, they were the shit because they was virgins. Yeah, they weren't like these other girls out here that's just giving their twat out to any and everybody. So I would always talk to them about that. So they thought that they was that deal because they were virgins. Yeah, remember I was trying to break that generational curse about my children not having children at 17. So I did that. Yeah, but it's a lot of work that goes into it because your children are influenced by so much. Let me tell you one thing you can do to preserve your children's innocence. Don't give them a cell phone until they get to high school. You'll be surprised how your child will grow and develop without so much outside interference. Because, you know, by them having them cell phones, they have access to everything. You know, they look at the same thing. You looking at some, some headlines come up, CNN or whatever. You So, it, you know, you don't have time to debrief them. You know, they just hear it like you hear it, and it's whatever. You know, whatever it is. War, the, people getting shot, schools, and all the stuff that you hear that's devastating to you, your child hears it too. As to where if they didn't have access like that, they would have to wait till they get to the crib or get to the TV or one of their friends would have to tell them after class or something. And then you got to go to the next class so they ain't got time. So when you get them, picking them up, you got time to kick it with them about what's going on to kind of ease their mind about whatever it is or, or or get them the heads up before they see it on TV or they cell phone. Yep. One way to preserve your child's innocence is not give them a cell phone until they get to high school. They don't really need it before then, for real, for real. Do you talk to your children about sexual orientation? Is your child gay? Do you know? Have they told you? Have you had the conversation? Or you just assume? You just assume because your daughter wear boy clothes and baggy clothes that she like girls. That might not be the case. I, I wore baggy clothes. I'm a tomboy to my heart. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you, I used to do backwards flips. I used to beat boys up. I jit. I still jit. I ride motorcycles. I work on houses. I got every tool. If I take you back to my shed, you would swear a dude lives here. Well, dudes live here. My sons live here. But you would swear I got a man. He was, and them ain't they tools. Them mines. Well, Jay got some back there because he has a line service. But the rest of them tools back there, they mines. I even think I got a C-clamp back there. I work on cars. Like, I'm a straight do the woman's clothing yeah women's clothing but i ain't about to eat nothing that's gonna get up and walk away from me i'm just not gonna do it i ain't gonna eat nothing that's not gonna i ain't gonna get put no weight on i ain't gonna i can't i can't season it i can't I, I, so just because your daughter wear boy clothes that don't mean that she's gay hey adisa how you doing babe and just because your boy act feminine doesn't necessarily mean that he's gay yeah, it doesn't. It might just mean that he be around his mama and all her sisters, and he just watch them do what they do. Ain't no men around when he over his mama's house. And so he emulate what he see, and what he see is women all day, putting on clothes, dressing up, heels, and stuff like that. But that don't necessarily mean that he's gay. But do you know if your child is gay or not? Have you had that conversation? Have they verbally said it to you? And if they are, do you support them? Do you support that lifestyle? Do you not? I had a service the child, and he was about 15, 16 years old, and, um, he was trans transitioning. He wanted to be a girl. And do you know the only reason why he was misbehaving and the mama had to bring him to the office after we had our family our family meeting is because she wouldn't allow him to wear his dresses. 
She don't want him to wear his dress. She says she accepts the fact that he gay, but he got to dress like a boy when he around her. And so the conversation me and her had to have was, how are you accepting if you're not allowing him to wear, or her, as he like to be called, um, her, to wear what she wants to wear and what she feel comfortable in. So you want her to dress how you want her to dress so you can feel comfortable. So me and the mama had to have, hey, Sharkida, how you doing, boo-boo? So me and the mom had to have a conversation in front of the child, you know, so that she's very aware of what she's really doing. You're not accepting it. And as a result of, that's why she acting out the way that she is. She's not happy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you got to have a conversation with your baby so you will know how to raise your child. You will know how to attend to that baby. You will know how to uh, uh, the special needs of that child because at this point this baby needs special attention because you got in mind that you got a boy but all the time he's a girl so now you shit all the plans that you probably had all the things that you wanted for the son and all your, now you got to flip all that because you got a daughter now you got you got three girls now so <laughs> Shit, you got to adjust, and you got to adjust fast as hell. As soon as they tell you, you got to start adjusting. Like he told her that he was gay at 12. Here it is now. He's 16. So you don't put this boy in a prison all these years just because you're not comfortable with his sexuality and what he chooses to do. That's a problem for me. So I have to address that in the family meeting. That's why I tell you, people, when they bring their kids to attitude adjustment, they used to think that the jail tour was the big hype. But it's not the jail tour. It's the conversation that we have at the family meeting because you can take a child to a jail tour and it's scaring for a few minutes but you're taking that child back to the same environment that he came from so you got to change the environment so when we have the family meeting i get deep into your business i need to know what's going on how is this child raised what's your daily routine what do you do for a living what's going on and i mean we, we get real deep in the family meeting so yeah, I charge a pretty penny i charge 75 dollars for the class you know i do for the for the i do that's, that's, that's what it seems like a lot of money to a lot of people because they be all for the program until I tell them how much it costs. And then it's like, well, I'll get back with you. Okay, get back with me then. <laughs> Hopefully it ain't when your child is in jail or underground because the things you just told me that this child is doing, it, he obviously needs the program or she obviously needs the program, but you will spend that $75 on something else. People tend to spend on what they want versus what they need, but that ain't none of my business. Do you talk to your baby about... Is your child sexually active? Do you know that I asked you that already? Because I got distracted. Did I? Oh, you don't know? Oh, you need, don't just assume. <laughs> just because you ain't caught him in the act. Yep, you need to talk to your baby because then after that, you need to have a conversation about protection. Yeah. Do you talk to your children about having kids? Do you know if your child wants children or not? Do you talk to your children about marriage? That's something that I pushed. Yeah, I know I ain't married right now, but I tried it. I told you I tried it a couple of times. And I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I think marriage is a beautiful thing. If you find somebody that's like-minded, they want the same thing you want, y'all going for it, y'all about to... Yep, I, I believe that. I, my man is out there. I think I'm going to find him once I get myself together. Yep, he out there getting himself together. So that when we come together, we both there. Yep, that's what I think. So, yeah. I, but I, that's what I, I kind of preach marriage the sanctity of marriage uh you, you need somebody in your life um it's just I, that's something that i preach that's all i can tell you i wish i would have fell in love with my childhood sweetheart and that would have been the only person that i had sex with and my kids all to be by that person i wish and that's what that's the story and that's the that's the illusion that i tried to sell these children okay just to get them to understand the importance of marriage yeah because nowadays people ain't thinking about marriage they ain't trying to get married for real these kids ain't think these little girls is whores oh that's all i see they listening to this music have you listened to the lyrics of some of these songs oh my, oh my god i heard one the other day that girl said her booty is brown and her cool fixing jesus and it's on the radio this is what your children listen to this is what your daughters are influenced by every song i listen to is talking about sex every song i listen to is talking about sex and they body and they, and they showing their body i ain't seen no girl yet that's out here rapping this dress properly <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. They naked. Like, your little girls is growing up to be whores. I don't see none of them that's striving to be somebody's wife. I don't hear none of them talking about marriage, for real. They got all these kids about all these different daddies. I hate I got all these different daddies. <laughs> I got a 
<laughs> I mismanaged the cooch. So I used to preach to little girls as I was coming up about having kids. When I was pregnant at 17, I was talking to little girls about not being pregnant at 17. And yeah, it's just baby daddies out here. I did. I do. It is what it is, you know. So I used to preach to them about that. You don't, you don't want your baby just having babies out here with everybody. You wanna. So I'm just wondering, do you talk to your babies about marriage? That's all. Let me go ahead and get up off of here. I see y'all popping on, and I'm getting excited. Um, that's it. That's it. I think the last thing was marriage. Do you know if your child wants to get married or not? Because they will tell you. And then if your child wants children, hey, Charles, and you should know if they want kids or not because their kids will tell you. And be charged towards a charged towards a person health insurance, the classes, but you brought up it's valuable information that poverty mindset need access to most times in a matter of programming around them. That is true, Sharkita. I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. So y'all, yep, that's it. Basically, this was conversation rise that you, conversations that you have with your children in the car. Are you talking to your kids about these things? All these things are relevant to their growth and development, and it's better that they hear it from you than hear it out in the streets. And then one tip I gave you about preserving your child's innocence is don't give them a cell phone. Yeah, you might sound, that might sound crazy to you, right? But did you have a cell phone? <laughs> I'm just asking. I know they like, but that's old school. No, it's not for real. First of all, how expensive are these phones? Some of these kids' phones look like they cost more than mine. And I have four businesses. I have four businesses and some of these kids' phones. So I know you pr you, p you paid a pretty penny for that phone. And then your bill a month. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. What do a kid need with a cell phone? That's a whole nother video. I ain't about to go down there with you today. I'm about to get up off of this phone. It's like, y'all enjoy y'all Thursday. Go to my YouTube channel. Quit playing. They are poised in April. You about to get me started on cell phones. I do not believe children need a cell phone. Why? It's a distraction for one in class. They can't learn nothing because they're too busy trying to get on that phone. And then they're getting information before you can dissect it for them. Like, no, they don't need it until they get to high school. High school, they probably driving. They probably catching the bus they out here in the world yeah they need a cell phone soon as they soon as my oldest daughter got to the ninth grade she got her first cell phone and as a result of her getting her cell phone at that time she was very responsible she didn't break it she didn't lose it she was very responsible i had time to teach her phone etiquette i had time she didn't need it if she needed a phone she could use my phone or the house phone she didn't need a cell phone for what as to where my youngest her dad gave her a cell phone when she was about 10 years old. And regardless of how I felt about it, I expressed how I felt it wasn't a good idea. It caused disruption in my household because the oldest can't have one. Why she got one, I can't have one. She didn't need one. And as a result of, the youngest had social media pages that nobody knew about. She was all on the internet growing up too fast because of it. Fix it, Jesus. That's a whole nother conversation. April, I'm out. Y'all have a good day. <laughs>